my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are looking at TCS's which are traction control systems. So we're going to break this video down to tiny little sections so we can see it's quite easy to follow. So first, what does it do? What does a traction control system do? What parts make up the system? How the system actually works? What the ECU reads? And what happens when the traction control system is actually working? So, what does it do? A traction control system regains traction when you lose it. So when you accelerate and you give it a load of gas and the wheel starts to spin because traction is lost. Um, the traction control can sense this, that's the first part. And then when it senses this going on, the ECU can then manipulate the engine to lower the torque that's been sent to the rear wheel to give the tyre a chance to then regain grip. And then everything's hunky-dory. In the MotoGP they have, or used to have until very recently, they have launch control, which is you push a button, it's all these settings. That's when the traction control is really doing its most, because you're trying to get away as physically fast as you can, and obviously if you give it too much, you're going to wheel spin like crazy. So on launch control for the MotoGP, you push a button, you give it all the throttle, and the bike mediates that throttle, the supply, uh, yeah, mediates the torque that's applied to the rear wheel, so you have the best acceleration curve with minimal to no wheel slip. So the components that are involved are the wheel speed sensor, which is a ferrous disc, so it has to have it has to be a magnetic material. It can be nickel, cobalt, or iron. Sometimes they do try and mix alloys in to try and make the whole thing lighter. The next thing you have is a Hall effect sensor. So this is the actual sensor that picks up the wheel speed. On top of this, you usually need a throttle positioning sensor, so the ECU knows where the throttle is, and obviously you need an ECU, so this is an electronic system, hence why it's a more modern day thing. So the way it works is, is that this wheel sensor disc has loads of grooves or windows cut into um, a, di a set diameter, basically like a circumference, all the way around, some systems have one of these windows missing, and I'll get to that in a minute. And then you have a Hall effect sensor. So a Hall effect sensor pick is basically affects a magnet basically inside. And as these ferrous spars, so you're looking at these bits, not the holes, not the windows, these bits. As one of these pass the Hall effect sensor, a pulse is sent down. So Imagine these are all your windows, like so. What the sensor is going to sell, send as a signal is something like this. It's going to bump there, bump there, you make a pulse, pulse, pulse. Now, some of the systems, and ABS systems in particular, use a very similar thing like this because this is to detect slip when you're losing traction. And the same thing is with ABS systems. So an ABS system is there to stamp your brakes on to stop the wheel skidding. In a sense, it's a reverse because you're trying to slow down, not trying to increase your speed. But the principle's the same. It, this is a, a wheel speed detector. So now, what we have is we have a hall, we have a hall effect sensor. We have our um, wheel disc, our wheel speed disc, and we also have our throttle position sensor. And this is all sent to the ECU. And what the ECU sees, I know it's graphs, but you decide you don't need to shit yourself. This is change in acceleration. And this is time. So if you're going at a steady state speed, your throttle position sensor will say this. If you are accelerating to go from 60 to 70, your bike will do, the, the speed sensor will say this, and then your throttle position sensor will say something like pretty much the same. Remember, this is change in acceleration or change in position for your, your um, potentiometer and your throttle. What happens is, is that when you get slip, is you go up and then it starts to go faster than it should, like so. Your throttle positioning sensor, on the other hand, will come across like this, go up, and then do this. And it's this change here that's the slip. 
this means that your wheel is travelling faster than expected. The ECU has been told that you've just given it a gradual acceleration and the wheel is starting to go faster than it should and when you apply the same torque if you start losing friction everything goes faster. We all kind of know that. So this is how the ECU knows what's, what should happen with the throttle, the throttle position sensor and what is actually happening at the wheel. So now that the ECU has detected that slip is occurring, what can the ECU do? Different systems work on different principles, it depends what the manufacturer feels comfortable doing, it just, it's up to them. The other thing is as well is it also depends what systems are in play. So the one thing that the ECU can do is the ECU can tell the spark plugs to miss, just misfire, two or three two or three strokes, you've got to remember if you're doing 6,000, 7,000 RPM because you're accelerating, it can tell the spark plug to miss a couple of beats. This instantly lowers the torque, but well, it cuts the torque production full stop, which means that the bike automatically starts to slow down and the tyres have time to regain traction. The other thing that it can do is it can do the same kind of trick but with injectors. It can say, just stop squirting fuel and the MotoGP system kind of works in this kind of way because they're full on fuel economy because they need to make their 14 litres last the whole race. But again, there is deviations between some race teams. The other thing that you can do is, is if an ABS, I should write that on there. If an ABS system is in effect, is fitted to this machine, then the bike can actually apply the brakes ever so slightly just to slow down the rear tyre so that it may, so it can regain traction. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Traction control systems are there so when you start to slip the ECU can detect it, that's what the front half was for, and then as soon as it detects slip and it's you know within its parameters that the programmed it with, it can then use certain functions to slow the bike down so it can regain traction again. The other thing as well is that um, this system is pretty much um, hand in hand nowadays with the uh, fly by wire system, you know, the electronic throttle. So it's not an in, it's not actual because it's not carbs, it's injectors. It's just a signal that goes to the ECU, and the ECU can even then just like launch control. You give it the full screw, and it just adds fuel to accelerate until it starts to detect slip, and then it hovers just below that slip point. So you're getting maximum traction, maximum acceleration, and away you go. Right, if you have any suggestions of any videos, there's been quite a few, and yes, they are coming up, USD forks, uh, Desmodronic valves that Ducati run, or Desmodensinis. Um, yeah, please leave um, in the thing, in the comment, what have you. Anything you don't understand, it could be really simple, like upside down forks and stuff like that. Right, I'll see you in a bit.